great. Hello, everyone. Let's do that again. So what are we going to be covering today? So I've got this simple scene set up, uh, just like a little mock-up of what a TV in a room would look like. Um, what, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how to set it up to, to give a good fall off, like it's a television screen or a computer screen, because that's so common in animated films now is just um, this idea of an animated screen, um, like either phones, computer monitors, televisions, movie screens, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna show you how to uh, generate a simple pass, generate a more complex pass, uh, an RGB pass that will give us more control, and ultimately use an expression in Nuke that will allow us to create a simple, soft, or harsh, uh, however we wanna create our TV flicker for that. So. Thank you very much, Clever. I apologize for the lack of sound there. And again, if anybody has anything, any other technical issues, or if anything happens, or if you have any questions during this presentation, don't be shy to throw them in the chat window in uh, Facebook. Hello again, Sandipan, and uh, and let me know. Okay, so here's our basic scene. Um, show you guys what we got here. Just got some primitives in a room um, where the primary visibility on the uh, walls is turned off. Now let's go inside here. We've got this television screen. And what I wanna do is I wanna project an image out from this, right? I wanna project a light out from that. Now, there are some that can uh, create a mesh light there. And I genuinely don't like to do that because there's, as I've shown in previous examples, <clears throat> you don't always get the most artistic control out of that as you would with, um, with creating an area light. And then I'm not gonna do this here, but usually what I would do is then adjust the shader to make it look like it's bright uh, and emanating that out. And who knows, I'm trying to keep these under half hour. If I have time, I'll go ahead and, and show you a quick, uh, quick way of doing that as well. We're gonna get our area light. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just throw it roughly into position here. Cause for the most part, I, I usually like to start with what's like physically accurate to the space or what would, uh, what would be the most accurate to the surrounding. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in, um, use this to rotate it exactly 90 degrees, and then just scale this into place so it looks about right. Now, what often happens if you're on a film set, um, unless you're physically seeing the TV, you know, if you're just kind of looking this way at the audience um, and the TV itself is off camera and you're seeing the flickering happening here, it won't actually be caused from a TV. They'll often use like a spotlight or like a, a much smaller light source to kind of create some harsher shadows. So we might, we might actually be able to simulate that too. So let's go ahead and we'll just uh, fire up our little renderer here. And obviously we don't see anything yet because our um, exposure is set to zero. So let's go ahead and just turn it up to 15. That's too much. And we're just gonna go ahead and dial that back into place there. Okay. So now we're seeing some attenuation, uh, what we'd expect out of a, a, a nice Arnold light there. You know, the spot is bright here around the, um, the foreground here and it kind of falls off this way. I think that's looking very nice. Um, let me just go ahead and zoom on in here. Let's go ahead and get in here a little bit. Okay. And let's say this is, you know, we've set up our light and we are happy with it. And so now we're gonna go ahead and render this out. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and actually render this out because this is looking a little bit nicer than the one that I pre-created. Uh, let's go ahead and render this. And then what we're going to do is we will take it into our nuke session. And what I wanna do is use this as like a pass. Um, Cause if, if this was like a real render and I had all the shaders and everything set up for the normal one and I, I created the normal lighting and then Usually what I would do is I would add this type of a layer on top of it. And now I can take this in here, let's go and see what we got here. And I can use this to drive, now that I added a grade node, I can like animate this value and create the light going brighter and darker. Now I could definitely go in and on frame one, like animate the value at 1.8, and then go to the next frame and be like, okay, now I want it to kind of drop down a little bit. All right, now I want it to kind of stay at 0.76 for four frames. So I'm gonna, and 
I got to tell you, at this point, I'm already kind of getting exhausted at it. So what I, I had a friend who told me a long time ago that the minute that he sets a keyframe, he starts to fall asleep. And I kind of agree entirely. So what I like to do is figure out a way to create something that can um, generate that animation procedurally. So in these, uh, inside Nuke here, change this down. Um, what you can do is inside the, let's do inside the gain. You can create an expression and you can edit an expression. And this will bring up this little pop-up box. Um, you can do like, you know, you can do math equations in there and you can see the result here. Um, but, and by no means am I a, an experienced code writer or anything, but I do know how to do some basic stuff. And I also know how to use Google. Um, and so one of the things that you can do, here's a, few, here's a few things that you can do. You can just type the word frame in here and you can see that these values, if you watch this, these values will increase with the frame number, right? Not exactly what we want. We don't want it to just get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. But what we do want, man, that's crazy. Um, but what we do want is, um, it's good knowledge to know that that frame, if we just type that in, can actually generate um, a different number on every frame, a different seed number. Now that's gonna be very important to us. So let's go in and edit this expression. Because one other thing that we can do is, we, is uh, Nuke has a, a random node, or a random uh, a driver, a randomizer. But you can see that um, already it's telling me there are num <clears throat> a wrong number of arguments to, to random. And basically what it's looking for is it's looking for a seed. So if I like gave it, if I gave it a number in here, if I was like, say random, and like I said, it I gave it a four, it would create a random number off of that, but that would stay the same throughout the entire shot. So what we want to do is we want to give it a frame as the seed of that, because that'll change with every frame. So now if we go through, you can see now we're getting some super flicker which is cool, right? Like this is kind of what we want. Um, it's not really what we want because it's too fast and it's just like too much, right? There's just like too much variation on it. Um, now what we wanna do is we wanna take that and we wanna kind of adjust this expression a little bit more. So one way that we can do that is I was saying it's too, it's like too drastic. It's going up and down too much we can add another expression on top of this called a clamp. And what a clamp does, I'll show you this in just a second. We can clamp these values to let's say zero, let's go like point, 0 0.5 to one. Now what this expression is doing is saying, okay, take this, you know, you're gonna randomize based on the seed of the frame, but maintain those within 0.5 and one. Okay, so now let's see what that looks like. Oh, let's go ahead and close this out. Now you can see the flick is the flicker is still happening, but it's a much um, it's a it's a it's a lesser amount, right? It's a it's not as drastic, and you can kind of see this um, if let's see if we bah, bah, bah. try to see if I can add a <laughs> window. That's all right. Um, oh, there it is, the curve editor. So you can kind of see now that all of the, these are just like the values. Um, at each point, they're, they're, they're stopping at 0.5 and they're going up to one. Now you can, you can adjust this in the expression. So if I wanted this to go from one to two, and we'll play this out. Oh, that's weird. It stayed within that. I wonder why. Oh, because I didn't actually change it. There we go. Huh. Okay. Hmm. That's strange. Okay. Let's say zero one. Let's keep it in there. Oh, I know, because clamp actually. Okay, it zeroes it out at one. All right. So now we've got this. Now the one thing about um Anytime that we're animating light values or we're controlling that, we want it to be, um, you, we want it to be help drive the emotion of the scene. 
So if we're like looking for a totally frenetic, crazy scene that maybe we would want the value to change on every single frame, but uh, that's not normally the case. Like, like let's say we have a, a situation where we have a couple of characters just like hanging out in this room and we want to create like a nice pulsating of light. Um, instead of having it change on every single frame, we want to slow that down a little bit. So let's go and open this back up and make it for more drastic changes just so we can see it. Um, and instead of it being on every frame, we want it to be, let's say we want it to change every fourth frame. All you have to do is divide by two. So what that does is it takes that frame number, and like I said, because you can use math here, and you can divide it by two, and there, therefore, it only changes every fourth frame. So let's take a look at that. So now you can see it's kind of pulsing a little bit more. It's, it's animating between them, but it's kind of like, because if you think about how a movie scene would change, we can actually uh, make this a little bit further apart. So we make this eight, and then if we really want it to be subtle, then we can we can dial in these values too. And now you can see it's like kind of just like pulsating, right? Because if you think about a film or a TV show or something, generally speaking, the lighting doesn't change that much from shot, or like the look of it doesn't change from shot to shot, um, unless it's like an action film where it's like jump, cut, 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 cut. It'll usually be like a dialogue scene between two characters and be like this, and then this, and then this, and then that, and it won't be it won't be changing that much. So my rule of thumb when I'm determining how fast to animate these and how to change these up is I usually say that um, I would uh, do it as quickly as um, like the scene. It, like basically, I, I want it to mirror the scene itself. So if you have a high drama scene, I would pretend that what's playing on the TV is a high drama scene. If you have a very romantic scene, I pretend that what's on TV is the same. It, it mimics it so that the pace and the lighting and everything can kind of stay the same. Okay, now let's say we have this shot. Um, and one of the things that I always try and set our students up for and myself up for is in anticipation of notes because this is a big part of our industry. Most of the time you're making uh, your work is uh, you, you're not doing it 100% by yourself. You need to um, get it approved by a director, an art director, a creative director, CG soup, something along, or VFX soup, something along those lines. And so for that, I'm going to show you guys how to create something that's a little bit more, um, a little bit more, uh, um, how do I, like it's, it's, it's just, it's easier to control. Because like, let's say we were looking at this and I was like, oh, I think that looks great. We show it to an art director and the art director is like, you know what? I want to create more light around the base and then I want it to expand out further or something. Um, now you can jump back in your Maya file and I'm like, okay, I can take this and I can adjust some of the settings and oh, let's see if I can get that right. Um, instead, what I like to do is if I'm using these, like basically this to just be a single thing, like just the, the flickering light, um, what I want to do is I can utilize the red, the green, and the blue channels to create multiple looks. Let me explain what I mean by that. So we're using this as like a, a pure white light, right? Um, and now when we shine it into the scene, um, you can see like, yeah, it's kind of going back here. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and when I look at the you know, red channel, the green channel, the blue channel, it's the alpha channel, it's all, it's all the same. Like they all, they all just look the same because it's pure white light. Now let's say instead of it being white light, I made this a bright red light. Now when I look at the channels, okay, that's the red channel. That looks exactly the same. Oh, there's nothing in the blue and there's nothing in the green. What if instead of um, making, uh, leaving those green and blue channels blank, what if I fill them with information? And the easiest way that I can do that is by, by creating uh, a green and blue light. So let's take this light source that we have. Um, let's say I wanted to create a, a light with like just tighter shadows, right? So let's duplicate this. Um, and now we have a second light that we're gonna make, you know, reds first. I usually do green second. And then we take the second light and we scale that one down. So now, um, let me raise up. 
And this is also a good example of additive light, how red and green make yellow, which is weird to me. Um, so now instead of, let's say we want it to be brighter and we want it to build, like be just closer and now it's creating like a tighter shadow. So that when we look at the red channel versus the, the green channel, you can see they're actually making two different, two different passes all together, right? So red and green. Now let's say, okay, you know, like I said, there was a, we wanna create um, uh, a really, really bright light, like right around the source. Okay, let's do that. Let's go ahead and duplicate the light again. And just move it just a little bit just so we can see it. And instead of this one being red, again, now it's time for it to be blue. And it's very, very important that your, uh, your lights are 100% red, green, or blue. You don't want them to be like in the middle a little bit because they'll, they'll pollute the other colors. So now you have uh, this blue light. And let's say that I wanted to control the, the fall off of it. Um, let's go ahead and just set up the render here. And let's just take a look at the blue channel so I can, cause like now I don't, I don't even have to turn off the other lights to really control this. I can just look in the individual channels. Um, okay, so we want to adjust the fall off of this. So what I want to do is I want to add a light decay filter because if, if the director is like, hey, I want the decay to change on this, uh, if you're used to lighting in mental ray or something else, you, you would like look up through your settings and look for the type of decay, um, you know, maybe like quadratic or cubic or something, but Arnold doesn't really have that. Instead, what they have is a decay, a decay light filter. And if you go inside of this, uh, you're given two options. You're given the near attenuation and the far attenuation. If we use the near attenuation, you can say you can tell it where you want the light to start. So by by default at zero, you're saying I want the light to only be to, to start exactly where the source is. Um, and I want it to end at a certain point, you know, in space, right? So um, you know, let's say. Yeah, so you just you want it to you want to push it out the starting point of it, and so now there's nothing around here, but it's only you know casting light out there for whatever reason. And we use the far attenuation to control how deep into the room it goes. So if I just if I just want like I said to keep it close to the TV, I'll bring it in here, and then this uh, this other setting is how far you want it to go before it starts falling off. So like you can see when it's at 19, it, it stays bright for a little ways out versus when I pull it closer, it gets darker more. So it's like the, the point where when it starts to fade away. So if I wanted to just be like just in this little sliver, I'd put this to 12 and then, and then just kind of match those up that way. But I, I just want to pull it in a little bit closer to the camera or closer to the TV. Um, just so I can control just that region, right? And I won't have to worry about um, anything out here. So now we've, we've still got our, let me go back to my RGB. So now we've got our RGB. Again, the green is kind of controlling everything. The red is a little bit tighter and the blue is a, it's just really focused in around the center here. Um, let's go ahead and render that out. And change this. And while this is rendering out, I can start to show you what I did um, with another one. So we can kind of, just so you can get this taken care of. So um, I, I rendered this out earlier. Um, so this is just like a different set of values in the RGB. Um, and just to show you how you can isolate those three channels, uh, you can then take a shuffle node and plug it in here. And then if you're, if you're used to the way that Nuke used to be, the shuffle node has changed a little bit. And basically what I want to do is I want to take the red layer that's coming in and I want to shuffle it out to all the other layers. So now if I look through this, you're just seeing that versus um, do that again with the green. And again, it, it actually doesn't really matter what the other layers are as long as the alpha channel is there. But I like to, um, oh yeah, sorry, I changed the wrong one there. Um, I like to just very clearly see what, what's going on. So now we've got the red, 
the green, and the blue. And now I'm able to control each one of those lights independently from one another. And you can see we've got this rendered out. That's not the best angle, but that's okay. We'll make it work. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so now we have our render out. And what, I, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've added our um, flicker to this. So you can see it kind of pulsating there. And what I've done is I've then gone, because I wanted to put that first, and I want, because I want the flicker to be the same regardless of, you know, what light exactly I'm, I'm adjusting. So we've got a red, we've got a green, and we've got the blue. Again, just closer to the camera. Now what I can do is I can start adjusting these. So I wanted to kind of make them all like this kind of bluer color to start. And the way that I did that was, um, and I'll show you that real quick. So, so basically I just, I went in here and I selected like the color that I would want. Let's, let's, I tell you what, let's make it, um, let's say I would go, I want to go in and like the director was like, you know what, instead of making like this pure blue, let's push it a little bit green. Let's make it weird. Um, instead of having to go through and change that light each time for this, you can see that um, these are blue because what I've done is I've made this color correct, like my master in the game. And then what I did was I took this value and I copied um, the link. And then in here in the red channel, I pasted relative. So what that does is it means that everything, and I go, I'll go ahead and show you here. So let me grade, grade another grade node. Um, and you can see like there's this and instead of it being i want to i want to sync these up so that if i want to change the color again i only want to do it once i'll take this copy the link and um in this game three hit four so they all pop up paste relative and if you watch the node tree boom you can see a green arrow pop up here you see it, the green arrows that means that there's a link between these two so now I, I can do that with this. Um, copy links. And you can do this for, um, and you can either paste absolute or paste relative. Absolute means like if I just, you can see it just like keeps the exact, it'll always remain that. But relative is I want to keep it relative to the original. Um, and the blue will be a full 100% for now. Um, copy links and paste relative. So now again, this is kind of like my master. Um, if I change this one around, it'll change all of them. So I did that for all, all of those lights. So now, so now you can see boom, 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 boom. They've all got that same color to them. Um, and then I can, you can go ahead and just add those back together and add those in the space. So now what I can do is if let's say I, you know I wanted to make it super bright around the source, so let's make that like let's double that, and then I can take this and I can pull that light source down, and then this further one that's that's like that's the tighter one, and then the one that's like further away, um, I can take that and use the multiplier to multiply that down. So now it's just a matter of like brighter around the source, and it just gives you more control over it in the long run. And again, because we are animating them at the source all that animation will, will filter all the way through here to the end. So that's my basic setup for creating a TV filter, um, or TV flicker, I should say, not a filter, and um, how I would do that. Let me just double check and make sure we don't have any questions going in here. Um, yeah, and then, and then as like a bonus, um, actually, let's see. So if I wanted to make that screen brighter, just see if we can do that. I don't know if I set up crypto mats on this or not. It does not look like I did. So instead what I would do is I could go in here, let's see if I can, this is a good test. Let's see if I can do this in like five minutes. Uh, let me go ahead and delete these. And then what I would have is this. Now let's not move the camera. We'll grab, just make a new perspective here for now. We go in there. Grab this face, assign a new material. Um, let's make it a matte material. 
AI matte, um, color red. So now let's go back to, so now I've got this, you render that out as a matte. It should take like no time at all to render. Red screen, there we go. I can pull that into my nuke. And shuffle out the red channel. Links. Zinks, zinks. Now I can use this gray node to control. Let's see if that controls the flicker on that a little bit. You can see it flickering just a little bit. That's cool. Um, and now I can use this or one, this original. Actually, I'll use this one because I should maintain. Yeah, it maintains the links. It's now down there. It's got more of that color. Um, and plus this over top of this. And now uh, I wanna just add a lot more value. And you know what, let's go ahead and glow it up a little bit. There you go. And I would dial in that look a little bit, but like, I don't, you know, and you can even animate that glowiness if you want, but that's basically, how I would do that a little bit. And now I've got like a little subtle um, TV flicker in less than a half hour or so. And something that, and this is what I try to pride myself on, is again, the ability to hit notes quickly. Because once you get into the industry, that is something that will impress your superiors and impress the people that you need to impress to get a full-time job and, to, and to, to, to have a longer career. Because uh, they, can, they can give you notes quickly and you can make the adjustments from there. So. If you all have any questions at all, let's see if there's anything in the chat windows. If you have more than three lights, like 10 lights, how would you filter each light? I usually use uh, light select and V-Ray. You can do that. Um, there are ways of, like if you're in render man, you can create um, uh, customizable AOVs. Um, but what I, like, what I will honestly do in, in a lot of situations, it's, um, is I will just make multiple RGB renders and RGB passes. Um, you can definitely use, uh, you can definitely use that, but if you do, if you just want to be simple about it, especially if you're working quickly, um, you can create multiple RGB passes. Um, you can also use like ID passes and things like that. I've seen that used in the past, but for me, I like to keep it pretty straightforward and, and go from there. Um, let's see if there's anything over here on Facebook. This is great. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm not getting notifications. I'm sorry that you're not getting the notifications on that. Uh, hmm. Okay, we will work on that. Um, and uh, I will talk to Facebook people. Let's see. Chat? Okay, great. Yes. So thank you all very much. If you're watching this on recording and you uh, would like to find out more, uh, feel free to add your comments below, either in Facebook or on YouTube, wherever you're watching this. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. So Wednesday of this week, we'll have an Ask Me Anything. Uh, segment on Friday, we'll be doing some lighting critiques. So make sure you get your images posted and, um, and yeah, we'll keep going from there. So remember, uh, for everyone, this is, we're coming up. It's May 18th. We've got 13 days left to submit your, uh, lighting challenge for this month, the C the city scene. So make sure you get those renders going because it may be a little bit heavy this time around and I can't wait to see what you guys create. So questions, let me know. In the meantime, happy lighting, everybody. Take care.